trying to make them go away. And we are live. You're, Yay! Joining, you're joining our conversation already in progress. Romaine has the hiccups. She's trying to make them go away. Yes, I do, and I'm trying, but they're not going anywhere. This is what happens when you work live. You have to work with what you got, as we've learned over many years of doing live radio. Now, ah, uh, yes, these live videos. All right, well, Romaine, I'm happy to see you. Uh, for people who are joining us uh, live on uh, YouTube or Google Plus, welcome. It's lovely to see you. Uh, <laughs> Is that I mean, what we're doing? We're seeing them? Well, I mean, we can't see them, but we can see their questions. Uh, if you're watching us on YouTube, there's a little uh, bar right here um, that uh, if you want to interact, you can click on it. And when you do, it'll pop the Google Plus screen. And then up at the top, you'll see something that looks like a keypad. That is the Q&A feature. You can ask your own questions or vote up or down other people's questions. Uh, so they'll move higher up inside the queue. Uh, and then uh, I feel like there's something else about that. I think that's it. Oh, we also, there's also a showcase button that has links to our show website, derekandermain.com, and uh, information to listen to our podcast, all that kind of fun stuff there too. Look at us, fully interactive. We're so good. It's crazy. <laughs> we are. <laughs> Anyway, lady, it's lovely to see you uh, back in New York with your familiar art behind you. Uh, it is uh, very good to be home. I will tell you that. Although I came home to a bit of a mess, go figure. You know, you leave Iris and Romy on their own for whatever, three weeks, and chaos is bound to happen, and it has. Um, although I will say Iris did... On a scale of one to 100, I would give Iris about an 80-ish in the cleaning of the house department. There were some things she clearly did great. Other things, like when she said she swapped, uh, she mopped and swept, I think she um, didn't really do that very well because she didn't move anything. And well, her idea of mopping is the wet jet Swiffer. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows to clean the floor, you have to move the tree. Yeah. So she did okay. And I will say this. In three weeks, my lawn has not been mowed. So there was a lot of yard work in particular when I got wow. here. So, yeah. Uh, well, I actually just for the first time in, I don't know, six or seven weeks or something, mowed the lawn a couple of days ago because... It had been so long since it rained here, the grass was not only not growing, but I was worried it would be completely dead and not come back. And actually, we got some torrential rain for like two days. And everything has come back lovely and everything. My, I have a peach tree in the backyard that I planted a couple of years ago. This is the first year it has borne fruit. And, uh, but the peaches are so scrawny because there was so little water this summer that I'm like, I don't think I could eat these. Oh, I'm surprised that the squirrels didn't eat them because the squirrels at my house eat all the peaches. I, have I never the, get a single one. Well, I have the netting up around it, so I'm not convinced they can actually get to it. I haven't seen any squirrels get up in there yet. But also, it could be because the tree is new. They don't yet know that there are peaches in it because mm. it's the first year. And then once they learn there's fruit in it, then they'll be all over it. And then you're fucked because yeah, then they're going to steal all of it. But like right now, the tree is so young that like the peaches are on it and like the tree leans over on the side where there are peaches. And I'm I'm more worried about the tree breaking from the weight of the peaches than uh, whether or not the squirrels get to it. But well, then I would recommend I would recommend taking all those peaches off there this year and don't let them get big so that it doesn't hurt the tree. Yeah, I should probably do that. Mm hmm. Uh, anyway, we already have some questions from people who are watching us live. Uh, okay. If you have a question, uh, click the Q&A button up at the top to ask your question or click the interact button here to get started. Jim's question is all about you, Romaine, and why we're doing a video on a Saturday. Jim <laughs> says, tell us the truth. Did you change the meetup because Romaine is on the run from the police following her vandalism-filled vacation? 
Oh, I wish I was on the run from the police. Uh, no, we changed it because actually tomorrow, uh, Sunday, when we usually do these Google Hangouts, I'm going to be really busy because I am the MC at the homecoming celebration for the New York City Cycle for the Cause AIDS ride. So I will actually be in New York City tomorrow um, welcoming all the riders home. I was kind of bummed out that I didn't get to participate in the ride this year, although honestly, I, I just... I can't even imagine having tried to find the energy for that on top of everything else I've been up to. Um, so anyway, so I did want to make sure though that we did a Google Hangout now that I'm home. And so I said to Derek this afternoon on, around noontime, I said, hey, you want to do a Google Hangout tonight around five? And he's like, sure. So here we are. <laughs> that, that's how it was. I was actually, and I had planned to uh text Romaine about it because you know last week when we did it it was kind of up in the air when we were going to do it and I was like oh yeah I should text her and then I saw the messages of when Romaine got home after her long drive and everything and how she went to bed at like eight o'clock at night I was, I was like, oh, so tired I gotta give her I gotta give her 24 36 hours to deal with whatever is waiting for her at home oh god <laughs> yeah, let me tell you Oh, the things that have been waiting for me when I got home. Oh, God. Oh, all oh, the headaches. Um, <laughs> it was funny. My brother John got to my house and he goes, you know, I wasn't really very worried about you, but I am now. And I'm like, what does that mean? He goes, honey, what is going on with your house? And look at it. I'm like, John, I have been away for three weeks. My wife and child have been running amok for three weeks. And Iris is uber busy between the gym and her job and taking care of Romy full time. I'm like, she hasn't had time to do shit. I'm like, so just suck it up, buttercup. It'll be fine. And then I spent all day today cleaning. So, so yay me. Whatever. That'll be me later on. As soon as this broadcast is over, it's today is the day to take the air conditioning units out of the window. And uh, it's too soon. It's not too soon. Look at the 10, 10 to 15 day forecast, Romaine. We're not going to get above 75 degrees. Oh, uh, maybe it is time. Ugh. Yeah. And I always feel like I take them out too early. And then there's that like two or three days of like scorching heat that make me want to die. I'm telling you, you missed that. It was a couple of weeks ago. All right. It was 95 degrees. It was insane how hot it was. And it was like, what the fuck? It was the first week of September and it was 95. That sounds about right, though, to me. Well, nothing about it was right. Anyway, we're definitely moving into fall now. So Yeah. Leaves are changing and falling to the ground. It is getting colder. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice transition. And driving across the country, you literally got to see it go from, like, green to changing, changing, changing. And then when you got out east, it's much more colorful than it is anywhere else. So yeah. that was kind of nice. Well, speaking of colorful, let's go back to our questions. Okay. Uh, you know, you can ask your question up here. Boop. Um, but uh, Andrew says, uh, thanks for the heads up on moving the time. LOL. Good to see you again, Andrew. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I'm glad we're back too. I know people were missing us while Romaine was in Colorado and we were off for Labor Day weekend. But here we are. We're back. We're back. Scott says, I really enjoy the podcast. Keep them up. Will we have any special guests coming either here or in podcasts? Well, Scott, that uh, one would assume that that would require some forethought. And uh, <laughs> Romaine and I are not, not putting any effort whatsoever as of right now into much of our uh, videos and podcasts just because we consider this a, a placeholder to keep you all engaged and happy until whatever our actual legitimate thing is that we will be doing, which is why it's free and haphazard, what have you. So whatever our new thing is when we announce it, there will undoubtedly be special guests. There will be more, more structure to things for sure. Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. We could spend a lot of energy producing and putting together amazing podcasts and Google Hangouts, or we could spend that same amount of energy trying to find a permanent home for the show. Which would you prefer? Yeah, I agree. We got to put our energy elsewhere. Although, I mean, uh, I have enjoyed the two podcasts that Romaine and I have done together so far. I wish the sound quality was better, but 
I mean, we're just not at a place of being able to do a high quality podcast 2000 miles apart from each other. But I think that people, people will find the sound quality of our future podcasts between the two of us to be much better now that Romaine is back home. I mean, it's still not going to be perfect until we get to whatever our new thing is, but it will be better than the last two. Um, and I've been enjoying doing my uh, little podcast. The last one I did on the GOP debate, uh, people have liked that one very much. Oh my um, God, that debate looked like it was amazing. I barely watched it because I was on the road when it happened, but the last one looked really good. Well, what was interesting about the GOP debate was like it was three hours long, which is too long. Too and, long. I mean, it was so long. And then when you got to hour two, people started to get a little punchy. I mean, they they wrapped up the debate with lighter questions. That's where they asked like, who would you put on the $10 bill? And what would your um, secret service name be? You know, cutesy, like warm people up kinds of things at the end. But the sort of half hour right before that, they asked questions and some of the answers that people gave were so loony. <laughs> and I think part of it was after two hours of standing in that heat and everything, people were not real crystal clear uh, up there. But um, yeah, it got super crazy by the last hour. So people are going to watch any hour of the GFP debate. Watch the last one. It was bizarre. It was mostly bizarre. Uh, nice. But anyway, I enjoyed doing the recaps. And um, that was fun. Um, <laughs> junk drawer says... What is happening? What is this music? Is this my life now? Okay, yes. Apparently, Junk Drawer is enjoying the intro I made for uh, my podcast. <laughs> Funny. Uh, and speaking of intros, Matt Mahaffey did the intro for our uh, podcast we do together. So we want to thank him. He's marvelous. Uh, let's go uh, to another question. Clint, this one's for you, Romaine. Clint okay. says, why is this song stuck in my head? Millions of peaches, peaches for me. I don't even know what song that is. How could that be a question for me? <laughs> Isn't that the peaches song from uh, whatever, from the 90s? I don't fucking know. Gonna get some peaches. I don't even know what that song is. I, I, I You've got me. I, I have no fucking idea. <laughs> No idea. Okay. Okay. Uh, Andrew says, this is a bizarre question. Wait. Uh, your house looks the same from last month. Is it real furniture? Do you think I have like a backdrop here, like a furnishings backdrop, and I just put this picture into it? Wait, hold on. Watch this. Okay. <laughs> I'll just move it's the like picture over a little. like a green screen behind you. You can put anything back there, Derek. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it really is. Here, I'll show everyone. I'll do a little. I'll do a little uh, wandering around in the backdrop, so you know it's like it's the real house. Here I am. Look, I'm sitting in a chair. Wee! Look, what I'm these shoes on. Things that people like. Ooh, and look, here I am. I'm like, wrapping things. Wee! The, the plastic wrap. Woo! All right. What do you have plastic wrap for? Uh, we actually, that's left over from when I moved eight years ago to wrap up the, like, wood furniture so the corners don't get dinged. Ah, uh, gotcha. Okay. Anyway, it's good if you need to wrap something that is... I have, like, a oh, huge roll of that, and I love it. For what? I use it every year to wrap up my Christmas tree at the end of the season, and then I stuff it in its giant bag. Oh, that's smart. We should do that. Uh-huh. It's really smart. I'm telling you. And it keeps, like, all the bugs and shit out in case a bug gets in there or something. Bugs? Just saying. I keep mine out in my fucking garage. So, you know, it could happen. Our Christmas tree is in the extra storage in the basement. But anyway, it is hard to get it back in the box once you, like, fluff it out. So that, that shit works probably be helpful. Mm -hmm. Just a little tip for people. Yeah, just a tip. <laughs> The tip uh, my the tip. says that Peaches song is like 20 years old. It is, but I don't remember who, who is it? Who does that song? Blind Melon? I don't even remember. Uh, Eric says, on my list of things to do this weekend was to thank you both for your podcast, though not live. To me, they are still quite great. 
I had the pleasure of listening to the two latest, not one, but two, you and Romaine on the road and your Republican uh, debate round two report. Oh my God, your political reports are the shizzle as the kids say these days. Oh honey, the kids haven't said that in a lot of days. Love them and can't wait for all of your upcoming 2016 nerd political reports. Love them. Well, you're welcome, Eric. Um, I think that the next debate coming up is the Democratic debate next month, and I'm very excited about that. So let's ha we'll have at it. Yay! Yay. Deborah says, uh, and you can check out our podcast at DerekandRomaine.com. Deborah says, arg, shiver me timbers. It's uh, ITLAP day. Talk like a pirate day. Why aren't you wearing some kind of pirate thing? I don't know if I have a pirate hat. Don't you have like a, you put the pirate mask on or something in here before, right? Oh, I could put that hat on. Hold on. You're right. Oh, hold on. Now, Romaine, it's going to get all fancy for you all. I'll get a pirate hat on. Okay. <laughs> Apparently, Romaine has added Google effects. Whoa, there they go. Yay. Talk like a pirate. Arr. Arr. She be in the Hold on, where's my eye patch at? Oh, oh there it is. <laughs> 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 Your wish is clearly our command. I'm prancing around yeah. on the furniture and remains a pirate. It's all here. Or okay, should Scott be says, does Romain have... <laughs> I'm gonna be an angry pirate. <laughs> oh, Scott says, does Romain's hat stand for female body inspector? Uh, it's female booty inspector, thank you very much, or booby inspector, as I would like it to be. My wife promised me, promised me the sexy time tonight, so I am wearing my sexy time hat. Okay. She did. I'm not even kidding. She said, <laughs> she was getting in her car, she goes, be ready. Tonight we're having some sex. And I was like, oh, okay then. I'll be ready. So I took, so I took some time with my shower today getting everything Rete. Wow. <laughs> I know I'm a dork. I can't help it. Well, good. I'm, look, I'm glad everything is squeaky clean and tight down there. That's right. This is the kind of important information that the listeners want to know. I know it is. I know. Clint says, the song is Peaches by the Presidents of the United States of America. Move into the country. Going to eat a lot of peaches. Still in my head. All right. So there you go. Okay. There you have it. And Mike T says, you mean Giddy hasn't sent you a pirate hat yet? Oh, my God. She has sent me a million and one hats, but not a pirate hat, I don't think. Um, the latest thing that she sent me, though, and I did find it really funny, is, you know, I lost my keys down an elevator shaft when I was in Colorado. So she sent me two things. One is a magnetic key box to put underneath six so that I could carry around my spare key. And the other is one of those totally dyke round with the chain, retractable chain, keychain things. I don't know what they're called. But she sent me one of those too. Okay. So I guess she doesn't want me to lose Six's keys anymore. But they didn't really get lost. I found them. You know, I don't have any keys at all anymore. I mean, the car has a fob. Right. Which you never touch. It's in my pocket. And then my house has a keypad entry. And so I just... Keys. What do you do though if the key fat key fob entry battery dies? Uh the fob for the car? No, for the for the house. We have a hidden key outside. Ah. In case the battery dies. Although we have like three doors with the keyless entry, so they're all the batteries are not gonna die all at once. Good point. Uh but even still, um, yeah, yeah, we do have a key that's hidden, and then we went. I think we changed an, another door and then we went to add the key to where we hid the other keys and then we couldn't find it. Oh shit. So <laughs> it's really well hidden. Even we don't know where it is. That's fucking funny. That makes me laugh. Um, but you should put on like, you know, for a certain day every year, like maybe on your birthday that you change all the batteries. Something you'll That's remember. Idea. Like when you're changing out the, um, yeah. uh, the whatever, the carbon monoxide and the, fire blah 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 yeah that yeah oh speaking of which i didn't realize this i was watch i watched the american experience on pbs they did a thing this week on walt disney 
Okay. And um, it was interesting. I mean, I've known a bit about Disney's life, um, but I thought it would be interesting to see, you know, their four hour documentary on it. Sure. And, uh, but one thing I didn't realize, and I mean, Walt must have felt guilty his whole life. So after he and his brother, which started, they started the Disney animation studio. Originally it was Disney brothers. And then Walt basically told Roy, you know what? I'm really the face of this. So it's going to be Walt Disney. So anyway, but I mean, they started it as brothers. I mean, it was Walt's idea, but they started as brothers and Roy was really like the business side of things. But once they got successful, they bought a house for their parents because their parents had been living in Missouri or whatever. They bought a house for them in Southern California so they could be close by. Aww. And Walt always had like a dicey relationship with his parents, like not a great relationship with them. But they buy this house for them so they could be close, be close to the grandkids and everything. And then a few months after they buy the house, there's a carbon monoxide leak in the house and the mother dies. Oh, I was so close. <laughs> what do you think it was? I thought it was the house burned down and they died. Yeah. <laughs> the father close. like barely escapes with his life and the mother dies. And then it's like, oh, I always kind of hated you. And then I bought you this thing and then it killed you. Like, wow. that's got a way on you. That's fucked up. That's yeah. pretty fucked up. It's super fucked up. But what's interesting is like the loss of a parent, <laughs> you yeah. know, then you get like from that happens. And then four years later, Bambi comes out. <laughs> it's like, okay. Yeah. And the losing of a parent becomes a ongoing Disney theme for a long time. Oh my God. I didn't even think about that. Now it makes so much sense. Yeah. No wonder all the Disney movies are, movies are snuff films. <laughs> they really are. <laughs> this just brings a whole lot of new meaning to everything. Wow. Thank you for sharing, Derek. It does. All right. Heidi says, uh, I just signed on and there was an ad before I get to you guys. I've never seen that before. Is that new? We're just so very popular that they felt like they needed to put ads in front of us. Is okay, it new? Yeah. I don't even know. Famous. Our videos are bigger than ever. I know, right? We are like so beloved by five people that it's overwhelming the love that we have. Scott says, I want peach cobbler now. Thanks for all the peach talk. Shut up. Fucking A, Scott. Now I want peach cobbler. I know. Is there anything better? No, nothing. Oh, I love peach cobbler so much. Mm. Now I want some. Damn it. Ask your own questions up here. Press the button. Okay, Junk Drawer is back again, says, can you get Stanton to be on this in audio form only? Let's not break the format and let it be on camera. Oh, it would break the camera if Stanton was on uh, camera. So yeah, it better be audio only. That's so hateful. I'm just, I'm just trying to be like, be me. <laughs> I've been so nice lately. Actually, that's not true, Derek. I was the biggest cunt while I was out in Colorado and Wyoming. I was wait, so crabby. Wait, I don't even know why. Surprise. Wait, hold on. Wait, hold on. <gasps> wait, no, that's not it. Wait. <gasps> okay. You were what? No, I was I was so mean and I really don't know why. I mean, huh. I honestly I can't tell you why I was. I was in such a good mood until I got around my family and then my good mood quickly faded and I was in a bad mood. I'm going to say that it was my brother Saban put me in a bad mood. He was so filled with negativity that I was just like, ugh, and just put me in a bad mood the whole time I was around him. And the second I got away from him, I was in a much better mood. It was really interesting. <laughs> now I'm home and I'm in an okay mood. I'd be in a better mood if I didn't have to work so hard once I got here. Ugh. Well, but whatever. I'll live. I mean, you do have to wash all those dishes that you didn't dirty and clean all those floors you didn't dirty. Wash all those clothes I didn't dirty. Oh, yeah. Super fun. Super fun. Can't <laughs> wait. So lucky. I'm so blessed. And when I asked my daughter, <laughs> she me. When I asked my daughter if she missed me, she's like, yeah, okay, I guess. Seriously, that's all you got? Oh my God, yeah. I mean, yeah. Although, two nights in a row, she slept in her own bed. That's like a Christmas miracle, so I'm kind of happy. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm happy about it. 
Well, maybe when you left, she just didn't need to sleep in the same bed with Iris anymore. Nope, she slept in my bed every night I was gone. Oh. She slept on my side of the bed, in fact. Hmm. Okay. I don't know what's happened, but I'm glad. I don't know either. Okay, another question. This one's from Mike. Mike says, I miss Yuri. Bro, do you miss Yuri? A little bit. I mean, listen, I kind of miss all, I miss all those little freaks. I miss all the freaks from the show who used to call all the time, and I worry about them when I don't hear from them. Luckily, I've heard from Yuri, so I know he's alive and well. Uh, I've heard from Ryan from Connecticut. I know he's alive and well. I mean, there's a few of them that I care about that I'm like, oh, please, I miss you. Mm, but for the most part, they're all alive and well, so all is good. Bobby, huh? you know, that kind of stuff. All right. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, so I just miss talking to him every day. That's the thing. And I feel like since I've been gone, like when I was out in Colorado, I didn't I didn't do very many um, periscopes like I had been doing because I just have been so busy. And even when I got back, I haven't done a lot of them. Um, so I'm hoping that next week I'll be able to get back into some kind of regular rotation uh, with my periscopes. Although I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to fit them in because starting on Monday, huh, Oh, I'm not even excited about this. Um, I'm going to start working out at the new gym. Yay! Yeah, I just feel like that if I'm going to be a gym owner, I should at least attempt to look like a gym owner. So, but I have told Iris... I will not take her classes that she coaches. I absolutely will not because I'll want to murder her. And I told her little boyfriend, Eli, that I will not take his classes either because he's been hounding me to start working out. And so I'm like, no, I will not take either of your classes. I'm going to my girlfriend Tara's classes. And I told her she's not allowed to kill me for the first month. I said, you, I said, you have to give me one month to adjust to working out. And after one month, then you can start pushing me really hard. No, she can't kill you until after we've been on the air with whatever our new show is for at least a year. Then I don't care if she kills you. <laughs> oh. But we have to reestablish first before you die. That's all I ask. Okay. Well, I'll tell her that I'm not allowed to die for at least a year. Okay. All right. Uh, Mike says, uh, okay, I don't miss Yuri, but I miss how you responded to him, Derek. All right. Uh, that's fair enough. And John says, Yuri tried to move to Frank's show and was turned down. Aww. Frank's got enough regulars. He doesn't need uh, old cast-offs from Derek and Romaine. How sad is that? That's a little sad. Uh, Julie says, uh, will we get to see the gym? Um, probably not in a, probably not in one of these Google Hangouts, but... Periscope. Um, I will, I will do it on Periscope. Yeah, I'll take you guys and do a tour. I mean, I just saw it for the first time yesterday, and it's not 100% finished, but it's pretty close to finish. Um, we, still have, we still have to do a lot of work on, like, the lobby and things like that, but um, it's getting there, and it looks really good. You could post a picture of yourself in the gym on our new Instagram, DNR Show. Uh, I could. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> I have I have I have Instagram on my cell phone for the gym because so because everyone else already had it for their personal selves and I don't know how to do two accounts on one phone, so I got to figure all that out. Uh, so I do have Instagram. I just don't know how to use it. You can log out and log into another account. Oh, you can. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. I guess I can try. Yeah. Okay. Uh, my. Mike says Frank has Stanton, but you know what? Stanton was never loyal to our show, which is nope. off all the time. Stanton used to call into Frank's show constantly. I would be listening to Frank's show and I would hear Stanton call in. And then I would email him later and tell him that he was, you know, not loyal. But he was clearly hedging his bets and that obviously has paid off for him. Right. Okay, Scott says, did you hear about The View getting into trouble? Then a comedian on the show defending herself went on serious and talked shit about Michelle Collins. She is lying. Michelle Collins would never say that about nurses. Romaine, have you seen any of this? No. I don't know the view? No, I missed it. Oh my God. What, what a shit show week. Let me tell you. All right. So for people who have not been following this closely, last week was the Miss America pageant. 
And one of the contestants in the Miss America pageant, Miss, Miss Colorado. Colorado. Yep. In the talent portion, she came out in her nurse's scrubs and did a monologue, an original monologue that I assume she wrote, but maybe not. They didn't specify that she wrote it, but it was an original monologue about her experience of being a nurse working with an Alzheimer's patient. Okay. So on Monday's episode of The View, they were talking about the Miss America pageant. And Michelle Collins, my friend, our friend, said that um, she that basically one of the people for the talent portion came out uh, in scrubs and read their emails. And that was their talent. So she made and, a joke. Yes, yeah, so she made a joke. And then uh, Joy Behar looked at the picture of her and said, why does she have a doctor's stethoscope? That was it. That was the entirety of the conversation about it. From that, several nurses took that to mean that they had been trashing nurses and the nursing profession and pressured advertisers to pull their support. What? From The View, yes. So Michelle and Joy, like the, the next day, day after, apologized and said, look, we were not we were just making a joke. It was not a joke aimed at all nurses. We're not saying that nurses aren't doing a vital job or anything. It was just, you know, it's the Miss America pageant. We're making fun of the Miss America pageant and how silly it is. Right. Not nurses, that nurses are silly. Right. Anyway, but apparently I, that I wasn't that enough. Was really, I thought that was a really interesting talent to just come out and do a monologue, by the way. Well, I mean, I certainly think so uh, because... I mean, with the talent thing, it's very hard to distinguish yourself. And we've seen people and play the piano or the violin or sing. Right. I think the woman who won did the opera. Yeah, and, she did. She's um, really good. I mean, it's part of why the Miss America pageant is this like weird holdover from another era. And I mean, I talked about it on Periscope and I was like, look, here's the thing. I listened to what they said. I've known Michelle Collins for 12 years. She doesn't have anything against nurses. She doesn't think that nurses are bad at their jobs or worthless or whatever it is that they think that they think about her or that she's not crediting nurses with the work that they do. But I mean, here is my point is it's the Miss America pageant. <laughs> if you, what you want is credibility, don't go on the Miss America pageant. It's not a place where people get their credibility as a human person. What? Uh, yeah. What? Because 10 minutes earlier, that nurse was parading around in a bathing suit so that people could evaluate her ass. So I, I think that if you want to be upset about something, if you think there's something that is degrading her and her occupation, how about the part where she was paraded around like a piece of meat while somebody held up a number evaluating her, you know, hip to breast ratio? So as far as I'm concerned, like, the real beef should not be among women. Once again, the beef should be about a society where a woman can't be taken seriously as a nurse or anything else unless she's willing to parade around in a bathing suit first. But like, this is a viable way for a woman to get a college scholarship. It's not right. They don't make men parade around in bathing suits in order to get a scholarship. And so to me, I feel like their beef should be elsewhere. So anyway, so... Friday's show, well, actually, I mean, there's more to the story because on Wednesday they had the Dear Fat People vlogger on. Okay. Did you see her no. video? No. Okay. God, this, I clearly have missed everything while I was traveling across the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the skinny blonde woman, she did a video. She does like little parody videos and everything. And she did a video called Dear Fat People. And basically her video was, <laughs> you're fat, stop eating. For like five minutes. It was like, you're not disabled because you can't fit in an airplane seat. You're fat. Stop eating. That was literally everything. That was all she said for like okay. five minutes. And nothing about it was funny. Uh, but she's like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm joking. I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm a comedian. But it wasn't funny. Anyway. So she comes on The View on Wednesday to defend right. herself from this video thing. The Dear Fat People video. And of course, she's like, I'm not apologizing. I did it to be funny and I thought I was funny and whatever, blah, blah, blah. 
So then she went on Opie and Jim Norton's show on Sirius XM. And she said that while she was backstage, Michelle Collins said, fuck nurses, they're wannabe doctors. So The View had put out a statement and said, this crazy lady was never anywhere near Michelle Collins backstage because she was up on stage the whole time. And Romaine and I have both been on talk shows before. And we they know how this separated. works. You almost never see the actual hosts of the show. Nope. Because they're in the pre-production of the show beforehand. You're sitting in a room with a tray of food. Yep. And then when it's time for your segment, like the five minutes before your segment, somebody with a headset on comes and pulls you out of that room. And then you're in a holding spot backstage. And then they bring you up on stage. And as soon as your segment is over, they're showing you the door. Yep, Sometimes that's exactly be like, if you want to sit works. in the audience or sit and watch the rest of the show, you can. But usually, but at that point, they're like, fuck it, bye. We got what we wanted out of you, get out. And meanwhile, the show is going on. You're not interacting with the people on the show. They're up on stage doing the show. So I find it very hard to believe that this woman had any kind of moment where she was w with Michelle Collins and this happened. So I think it didn't happen. But of course, this reignited the whole nurses thing. So then Friday's episode of The View was an hour-long ass kiss of nurses. Ugh. They had to bring nurses out, and then the nurses explained why their jobs were important. And then they brought out like 40 nurses onto the stage, and everybody had to applaud for the nurses. I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding. Yeah, that's, that's fucking stupid. I mean, here's the thing. First of all, they shouldn't build their programming around controversy. Even if Michelle Collins did say it, which I'm not saying she did because it doesn't seem like her. If The only way I could hear Michelle Collins saying something like that is if she was joking around. Because she does like to throw like really funny, kind of derogatory, mean one-liners out every once in a while. So I could see maybe, oh, like, fuck, nurses just want to be doctors. <laughs> Whatever, moving on. Like, but honestly, I really don't think she hates nurses. And I think it's annoying that people are so fucking sensitive that they cannot tell the people who really hate them from the people who are just fucking around. Yeah, but also, I'm sorry. Look, if you're a nurse, what you should be upset about is the dismantling of unions that fight for better pay, better hours, more nurses on the floor, uh, better equipment, uh, you know... The, what you should be fighting for and uh, are the things that actually matter to your profession. I don't think there's anyone out there that actually legitimately thinks that nurses don't serve a vital, useful function. I don't think anybody has thought that in the last 150 years. So I just it just seems like a nonsense, non-argument about nothing while real legitimate problems are happening that are not being addressed. So if you want to, you know, be upset about something, be upset about the fact that like hospitals are understaffed, that millions of people, even after Obamacare, still don't have health insurance, which means that if they can get medical treatment, it's subpar. So why not put your focus and emphasis where it belongs, not offhand remarks from show hosts that are not meant to be mean or derogatory toward your profession right it's really it's outrageous to me all right uh rory says uh derek and Romaine, i absolutely love hearing your show again speaking of the view is anyone with me in thinking that uh whoopee is kind of awful on the show Longtime cosby defender constantly confused mispronouncing things interrupting etc i miss rosie well Bro, you're not watching The View every day, are you? No. You know, I, I haven't been a view, like a daily viewer of The View for a long time. I, You know, if I catch it, I'll, I'll tune in for a few minutes. I have to agree, though, I'm not a big Whoopi fan on that show. I thought I would be, but I'm really not. Um, I just don't think she's a great fit, personally. Um, I do love Michelle Collins on the show. I've seen her on. I think she's doing a great job. She makes me laugh. I love her. Um... But yeah, I miss Rosie too. I, I think Rosie was really great on the show. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Whoopi is a good moderator on the show. Um, I just don't think it's a good fit for her. I think she's talented in a lot of er other areas, but I don't think 
that moderating the panel um, is really the best fit. But that being said, with the new panel, the weakest link for me is that Paula Ferris from Good Morning America. Really? Oh. And maybe it's because I'm missing Nicole Wallace, but I just don't think Paula Ferris brings anything really to the table. Like, I can't believe they went through this whole thing where she's already doing Good Morning America weekends, and now she's basically working six, seven days a week. I'm like, oh. But, like, I'm not impressed by her enough that I feel like she needs to work seven days a week on TV. Yeah, that seems like a lot. Yeah. I mean, listen, I don't think The View's had a great moderator since Meredith Vieira was on the show. I thought she was by far the best moderator they've ever had. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, I think, I think the, I hate to say it, but I think the best days of The View are long, long past. Whatever, as long as Michelle keeps getting paid. I agree. I want her to have a job for a long time. Yeah. Uh, and us too. Okay. We're working on it. Andrew says, how's Romaine's daughter? Derek, what's a turn on and turn offs in a guy? Oh, that's an awkward pair of questions. Ro, uh, what's happening you and your daughter? How's Romy? Okay. Uh, Romy's good. I think she grew like three inches while I was away. Um, she just started the third grade and she's very much liking her new teacher. So she's very happy with that. Um, She's still very much into Minecraft. She pretty much spends every waking moment either watching videos about these games or playing these games. Um, but she's doing really good. I missed her a lot while I was away. Your turn. Um, uh, turn on in a guy. Uh, I like a full head of hair, but I don't like a man bun. <laughs> the man buns are a real turn off. And the beards, I'm so afraid that there's going to be an outbreak of cholera with these ridiculous beards that are going on here. Ugh. So I'm not a big beard fan. A little bit of a beard is fine, but these like down to your knees, Rip Van Winkle beards and a man bun too. Like, oh no. I hope that when the man bun craze ends that men just like, and it all goes to locks of love. Because when I see them on the subway, I just want to, like, clip them. Oh, speaking of the subway, Romaine. Yes. I rode the new seven-line extension in New York to 34th Street. How was it? Oh, oh, my God. That train station is beautiful. You know what it looks like? You know how the um, subway stations are in Washington, D.C.? With, like, the oh, big yeah. sort of rounded ceilings? Where, I mean, it's clear you're underground, but you don't feel hemmed in. Yeah. So that's how it is at the 7th Street Station. It's really nice. Um, but because it's so far underground, they have this escalator with this very severe incline. And it was the first time on an escalator that I ever thought, I should probably hang on to the handrail. Like, that's how severe the incline is. They're like that in D.C. in a couple spots, too. Yeah. I remember, especially like DuPont Circle, if I remember correctly, has a really big escalator that's like super, super tall. And it goes on for what feels like forever. forever. And if you have to climb it because the escalator isn't working, you literally feel like you climbed a mountain by the time you get to the top. Yeah, if that escalator is ever not working, I'm just gonna like live down there until they fix it. Like it's not, yeah. I would not climb that shit. It's no. too far. It's literally like six stories. Yeah. Way too far. So that's anyway. pretty cool. Uh, but it's beautiful and it's right, it, it comes out right at where the Hudson Yards construction is. And what's weird is, so I went there and they're building this whole thing over the rail lines that lead out of Penn Station in New York. And they're building basically a whole mini city over it. It's incredible, the engineering feat that's going on there. But I was a little wistful because when I got out of the thing, I looked and I realized the place where I first saw the towers burning on 9-11, uh -huh. where I stood, it won't exist anymore. Oh, wow. Because it's all being, everything is being so uh, rebuilt and everything that right. it'll be gone. Wow. Yeah, I know. So I was like, wow, I've been here a long time. But it also, you know, New York City, ever since 9-11, has had a big fuck you to Osama bin Laden of like, we are going to turn this city into the most fantastic, amazing place on earth. And uh, we will not be brought down. We're just going to keep going. 
So, I mean, that part of it is nice, but it's nice to have that new station. And um, that's west side of Manhattan when they finish the Hudson Yards is going to be the hottest game in town. But here's yeah. what's great about it. I took the train there because I was going to see Everest in uh, IMAX. A friend mm -hmm. of mine, Tony, had uh, tickets to a screening. So I took it from Grand Central down to 34th and walked over to that AMC on 34th Street. It was fantastic. Nice. Yeah. I almost rewarded myself with some chicken fingers, but I didn't. Oh, I'm so glad you could show some restraint, Derek. Poquito. <laughs> You're a mess. Fernando says, how about Wendy Williams show? It looks like she's doing well. Okay. I, I mean, I don't watch Wendy Williams show, but we have friends who work on it. We uh, do. Michael E. Scott works on that show and Kevin Burroughs works on that show. And they're having a great time and we want them to remain employed. Yes. Uh, Scott has a question. So important. He asked it twice. Okay. Uh, what is this year's Halloween costumes, and how does Costco pizza compare to New York pizza? And if anyone is bad on The View, it's Raven. She doesn't know anything about guests. I like Whoopi on the show, just not as a moderator. He also said uh, that Raven makes faces that are inappropriate and that he misses Nicole Wallace. Uh, okay, Halloween costumes. I have not picked my Halloween costume yet, although Romy has already picked hers. She's going to be some kind of rock princess. Um, rock princess? I don't know. She was telling me about it. I don't know what it is. She's going to be uh, back in her car? Honestly, I have no idea what it is she wants to be. I just know she found one and that she wants it. Right. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to be for Halloween yet, but I'm taking some suggestions if you have some. I mean, I need some ideas. Well... Uh, Romaine and I are going to be meeting in the city next week, um, which, by the way, you know we're going to be there the same time the Pope is there. Fucking A. I know. I'm really tempted to call the person we're supposed to meet and see if we can arrange it for a different time. Or and be like, listen. Uh, Wednesday, maybe? Yeah. I'm going to ask. Yeah, let's see about Wednesday. I would much rather not be in the city while the Pope is in town. Uh, uh, just because the traffic... I don't want to deal with the Pope traffic. Please don't make me come into the city when the Pope's there. It will be so bad. The traffic will be so bad. Um, anyway, um, uh, we're going into the city, and when we do, I'm going to be going to Ricky's or one of the other Halloween pop-up stores because we, my neighbors, Wolfgang and Mary, are having an Oktoberfest party this weekend. Oh, fun. This weekend. And Mike and I originally, Mike, of course, looked to get costumed. He's like, Ooh, actual lederhosen are really expensive. And I was like, look, it's our neighbor's Oktoberfest party. If we just wear a shirt that has a picture of lederhosen on it, they're not going to care. So then, oh, uh, like on Friday, I was going to order like little hats because I thought, well, maybe we'll just get a pair of German hats and we won't wear lederhosen, but we'll just have hats. That'll be fun. You know sure. how I like to cheap out on a costume by just getting a hat? Because, uh, you know, my rationale is if you're in a crowd of people, they can only see the hat anyway. So, hat. Uh, but, it, but so here was the hat. The hats were like 12 bucks each. I was like, oh, that's cheap. No problem. But the shipping date had them arriving either the day of the party or the days after the party. But if I wanted expediting sh expedited shipping, it was $50. Come on. That's bullshit. And I was like, no, I'm sorry. I'm not paying fifty dollars to sh send an Oktoberfest hat. That, by the way, the window of delivery, the last day of it, was the actual day of the party. So I could still spend fifty dollars, and then the hat could get there the Monday after the party. So I was like, yeah. it's not worth it. So I am going to go and look and see um, uh, in the city what Oktoberfest ish things we can find. You know, um, like a party city or something will have good hats and stuff. Yeah, I'm sure. We're just gonna get some hats. It'll be fine. I'm I'm not gonna spend a lot of money. I'm just gonna get a little cute hat. Calm down. We got you. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Rick says, "How long was the grass in the front yard?" Oh my god. Let me put it this way: uh, there were parts of the yard that I didn't know that John was gonna be able to mow, and I really feel like I need to mow it again because I really don't even feel like it did a good job mowing it once. It was bad. It was really bad. Yeek. Yeah, it was like the grass was tall. 
maybe nine, 12 inches, something like that. It was a lot. Wow. Much That's longer than long. All right. Uh, Lynn has a question that she posted on our Google Plus page because I think that she doesn't know how to work the okay. Q&A button. But Lynn says, when is the next podcast with you and Romaine? Um, we'll probably try to do a podcast this week. Um, I don't know. Somewhere midweek, probably. We'll probably do a podcast. Won't we, do our, do our, do won't we Derek? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I would say probably Monday or Tuesday. Yeah, I got to, um, now that I'm home, I have to actually set up the um, the software on my new studio. Like, all the hardware is connected. I just need to get in and set up all the software. And once all the software is set up, we should be good to go. Yeah. So we'll we'll try to do it Monday or Tuesday. Just yeah. so that I'm trying to keep, like, having something out every, you know, four or five days. Right. So people have something to listen to. Although, so far... Tens of thousands of people have listened, so. Yay! Awesome. Yay, we're not happy. alone. That's very good. I'm glad we're not alone. No. Uh, DerekandRomaine.com uh, to listen to our podcast. Uh, Andrew says, when is the next time you will be on? Will you send email? Thanks to your fans. Thanks for answering my questions. You guys are fun to be around. Wish I could meet you guys. Uh, well, I mean, we'll probably, the next one after this will probably be on Sunday again. Although I don't know, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess so. And then, um, uh, yeah, we'll post about it on. Um, it'll probably be our usual Sunday at four, unless we have a conflict. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, I mean, we won't send an email, but we'll post about it probably a couple of days in advance, so it'll be on Facebook and Twitter, and and you know, if you're in our Google circle, you'll get a message. I can already tell you there will be a conflict next week at our normal time, so it'll probably be Saturday next week. Hot diggity. Oh, well, actually, no, because I have my Oktoberfest. So maybe it'll be um, either early on Sunday. It'll be earlier then because I have something I have to do on Sunday, and I cannot get out of it. What, Sunday later? Y yeah, it's from like 2 to 5. Oh. So maybe it'll either be earlier or it'll be later. On Sunday next week. I mean, I guess you should probably go later. Let me see when this uh, when this actual party is. Hold on. And it might be live from my gym. <laughs> uh, oh, whoops. I thought I got a party invite, but apparently it's just a list of guests. Oh. Okay, well, anyway. <laughs> the, the party invite is in the other room. I'm pretty sure the party is on Saturday. Okay. I think so. <laughs> but if it's on Sunday, then we'll do this on Saturday. We'll figure it out, bitches. We'll let you know. How about that? <laughs> Good. Uh oh, you just disappeared for a second. I don't know what happened. Okay. I'm here. I swear I am. All right. You got real dicey for me for a second there. So, okay. Well, we're pretty close to our end time anyway. So, we'll probably wrap it up. Okay. Uh, not that it's not fun for people to watch me look through my phone to try to figure out what my life is, but. Uh, anyway, the best way, of course, to keep up with us is to follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Yep. Because we post there about whatever our new things are. And then uh, subscribe to our podcast at DerekandRomaine.com. Uh, we've had lots of five-star reviews on iTunes, so keep them coming. Yay! Please save your constructive criticism about us and our show until after we've established whatever we're doing. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Or just confine your bitchiness to personal emails to us. Yeah, just time. keep in mind, bitches, if you complain about us and future employers see that you've complained about us, they may not hire us. So don't be dumbasses is what Derek is saying. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be clear. Also, it's demoralizing for us while we're actively seeking something to do when people are bitchy to us. Yeah, it kind of is. A little bit. A lot um, of it. Don't be assholes. Yes. Please. Wait until we're back to doing our, our official uh, professional stuff. And then if you want to be critical of that, knock yourself out. Exactly. But in the meantime, it's our own time and our own dime. Stow it. Yeah. Uh, Stephanie says, howdy from day two of Cycle for the Cause. Hey, Stephanie, I'll see you tomorrow. I wish I was there with you guys. I hope the team is doing amazing. I hope Jeff has not fallen off his bike and that, uh, that the sweet bands have been filled with only the best kind of people. 
or no kind of people that they've actually been, everyone's been going and everything's been fine. No, so you kind of want to pick up some people. Otherwise it gets real boring in those sweet bands. Trust me. Trust me. Okay. I'll take your word for it, lady. Anyway, congratulations to everybody who is riding in the cycle for the cause this weekend. People can still support riders for the cycle. Oh, yeah. uh, and if you are here in the New York City area, Sunday, Romaine will be there out front at the Gay Center when the riders come in. Yep. I'll be emceeing the, the afternoon events, and I'm really looking forward to it. So come say hi. Okay. Fantastic. And speaking of saying hi, Gay Days Anaheim, Friday, October 2nd. Be there or be square. Uh, we will be at the Anaheim Majestic Garden Hotel. Remains making a square herself. That's right. Don't be there, be square. Uh, Anaheim Majestic Garden Hotel on Friday, October 2nd. Uh, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. And then on Saturday, we'll be doing our regular meetup at 10.30 at the Riverbell Terrace inside Disneyland. Uh, yes. So come and have a Mickey Mouse pancake and join us. We look forward to it. Can't wait to see everybody at the happiest place that I love. <laughs> I, I thought your house was the happiest place that you love. Oh, please. Not the happiest place that I love. <laughs> All right. All right, lady. Well, I will see you later this week, and we'll yep. we'll talk in our podcast soon. Okay, sounds good. Talk to you later. Bye. See you to my bitches. Yar. <laughs> Yar. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>